Imagine this. A major fire breaks out inside this new 20-story wooden hotel in Sweden. Fear spreads that the whole building could collapse in minutes, giving the sleeping guests no time to escape. Normally, such tall buildings are made of concrete and steel, but the Sara Cultural Center, which opened three years ago, defies this norm. It's almost entirely made of timber. Don't worry. This story is merely hypothetical. The timber used in building the Sara Cultural Center doesn't burn easily. Thanks to new ways of making mass timber, we're witnessing a global trend of building taller and taller wooden skyscrapers. This eco-friendly material is starting to challenge the dominance of steel and concrete in construction. To witness this timber revolution up close, I recently went to Sweden where pioneering architects are pushing the boundaries of what's achievable with timber. Here in central Stockholm, architects are trying something that's never been done, building an entire city out of wood. Can we build an entire city from wood? The answer is an absolute yes, if you ask the company behind Stockholm Wood City. And this is the 3D model for what will be the world's largest construction project made from wood. Uh, in Stockholm Wood City, where we have an area where we're going to develop 30 buildings, more than 25, uh, or 25 blocks and more than 30 buildings. If we can change the way we build uh, and by using wood, we can make a big impact on the CO2 emissions in the production phase. But before explaining the fascinating details of this unprecedented Wood City project, I spoke with Oscar Norelius, the brain behind the Sara Cultural Center, to explain the latest innovations that made this high-rise timber building possible. The Sara Cultural Center it's, um, it's a building in Skellefteå, in northern Sweden. Uh, it's a, a timber building uh, that ended up being a 20-story timber building, one of the, the first 20-story buildings uh, building in the world, actually, in timber. One uh, part of it is that it's uh, pioneering timber project because it's one of the tallest and largest timber buildings realized in the world. So it's a building with two parts. One is municipal with different cultural actors that existed in Skellefteå already. So it's theaters, library, uh, art galleries and exhibitions. Uh, and that was paired with a 200 room hotel with uh, restaurants and a spa, etc. The whole building is made out of timber. When you build with timber, you connect it with steel, screws and plates. Um, we do have uh, a few transfer beams that are in, um, in steel as well. The foundations are concrete uh, and we have some dead weight on the top of the tower that's making it heavier because the light weight of timber is, is an issue with stability. Yeah, so building with timber, it's a very old concept of course. It's a material that we've had for a very long time, especially in this region where we have access to a lot of really good quality timber. Um, but what's happening today with these very large scale and high rise buildings is the use of engineered timber. So glue laminated timber and cross laminated timber mainly. What exactly are glue laminated timber and cross laminated timber? Glue laminated timber or glue lam is a new. It's been around since the 19th century. First used in 1842 in the Holy Trinity Church in England. Basically, it's made by gluing together layers of wood with the grains aligned, making them larger and stronger. Glue lam is used for things like columns, beams and trusses, spanning in one direction. Now, cross-laminated timber, or CLT, is newer and really changing the game. Described as plywood on steroids, it was first developed in Europe in the 1990s. And lately, it's been making it possible to build tall buildings out of wood. With CLT, layers of timber from a single log are glued together symmetrically, with a grain of each layer alternating at 90 degree angles. Most of the time, they use an odd number of layers, 
all glued together, facing the same way. Due to the complex physics involved in the perpendicular lamination, CLT is strong in two directions. The strength of a CLT board is similar to that of reinforced concrete. CLT has also proven to be exceptionally resilient against earthquakes, a critical factor for the structural integrity of high-rise buildings. It's perfect for making floors and walls inside. Sara Cultural Center in Sweden is not the only high-rise timber building in the world. Ascent, a 25-story residential and retail tower finished in 2022 in Wisconsin, has been certified as the world's tallest timber building, according to Dazin. The second tallest is Mostranet in Norway, which is 85.4 meters tall and opened in 2019. It's followed by Hoho Wien in Austria, which opened in 2020. Today, the tallest timber building is around 80 meters. Uh, you have on the drawing boards much taller buildings, and I think that the possibilities of going up in height are going to increase very fast uh, as we're learning from these pioneering projects at around 80 meters and learning from them. I think we're going to be able to, to work with even higher heights. So how high do you think uh, can uh, timber skyscrapers go? I think regardless what number I say, it's going to be wrong in, in either direction. So it's difficult to say. I don't think that there is actually a limit in how high you can go. The question is, how do you work with different materials in that case? So can we have timber buildings potentially as high as the uh, Burj Al Khalifa in Dubai? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Maybe not, and, and probably not because of technical aspects, but probably not also because I think if you do engage in timber construction, there's an understanding of sustainability and uh, context, and, uh, and of course the resources that you need to build 800 meter high tower are extreme, regardless if it's timber or in, in concrete. And I think it's, it's, uh, it's very unlikely that we'll see a project of that scale with the sustainability ambition that comes with timber. So I think it's not going to go up to those heights. Um, but uh, you can always uh, also use timber for different parts in a very tall building. You could take an 800 meter building and use some parts for the structure in concrete or steel and replace others with timber. I don't think that's impossible and I think that's where we need to end up in the discussion. Uh, how can we limit our climate impact? Because in the end that's the goal of building with timber. We can say there are less than 10 really tall timber buildings, which means taller than 10 stories in the world today. That means it's still a new material. <laughs> the level of competence and the number of people that know how to actually implement this is still limited. <laughs> that makes it more difficult. So we now have the, the possibility with, with um, engineered wood such as CLT and glue lamb also to, to design and to build tall buildings in uh, wood and in timber. And, and the driver is the need for uh, decreasing uh, uh, the climate impact. And the construction industry are responsible for somewhere around 40% of climate impact uh, globally. Now you may wonder why use timber instead of concrete and steel? Aren't they more durable than timber? That's what I initially thought, but I learned that this is not always necessarily the case. Nurse conducted a series of tests. Here is something that I found shocking about how mass timber and steel react to fire. Multiple empirical studies in the US and Europe have shown that mass timber does better than steel in a fire. While steel melts in high temperatures, mass timber's outer layer chars, sealing the interior and protecting it from damage. There's, there's extensive knowledge on how mass timber behaves uh, in case of a fire and it doesn't behave as one would think, uh, basically, because uh, mass timber is, like the name suggests, massive timber without air inside. So in case of a fire, it's, it's a fire on the surface. And uh, one of the characteristics of timber is that whenever there is a fire, um, the, the surface is charring. So, you know, it becomes charcoal, it becomes black, um, and it's slowly eating away at the timbers. But the, the rate at which the timber is being uh, deteriorated by the fire is very well known and, and standardized. So uh, most timber buildings were with visible timber, such as Sarah Culture Center, 
uh, are dimensioned so you have enough timber for them to burn for a few hours or for in this case 90 minutes and that's the time that you need to get everyone out of the building. Before we we were member, become members of the European Union, it happened 1995. Then we were not allowed to build tall buildings from timber. So we have a maximum height of two stories. Uh, so when we become members of the European Union, then we got an, an harmonized building code with the rest of, of Europe. And they have function-based building code rather than material-specific building code. Uh, apart from that, in Sweden we have a culture of sprinkling uh, our buildings, so we have a water-based uh, sprinkling system, uh, sprinkler system that uh, extinguishes any fire that arrives. So um, wood, as it is a, a very strong material that we just talked about, it's a strong material, it, it, it's also uh, light when it comes to, to its weight, and it's also perfect for, for using in prefabricated uh, methods. And it's uh, easy to work with in, in the off-site construction development, making or producing elements and even whole houses uh, in a factory. And then still it's possible to transport it, uh, to transport the house to the building site. So that's something we did in the Sarah Culture Center, that each hotel room was made in a factory. Like a box where we mounted the facade, the bathroom was inside, all the finishes, everything, and then it was, so all the 200 rooms were done in one factory, it was transported on site and stacked, which reduced the, the construction time by about a year. It's indoors that these modules are built and these uh, parts, uh, and it's a much safer environment for the workers as well. There's less people on the construction sites, there's more people in a factory where you can work with very monitored um, uh, safety measures and the construction site becomes more of an assembly site. And let's admit, timber buildings are a lot prettier than concrete ones, just because timber is so versatile and can be used to create any shape that you could create on a computer. Do you see that stunning globe-shaped dome behind me? That's actually a theater within Wisdom Stockholm, which is a scientific experience arena created to exemplify the immense potential that wood has in construction. Not far from this theater, the Stockholm Wood City is being built. It's actually quite fitting that this wood district will be here in Stockholm, which literally means Log Island. No, it's a it's a really big project, so mm -hmm. 25 blocks and more than 30 buildings. So it won't be just home and not only offices. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think the successful future cities will have to have a mixed use. That's where, where you create a, the happiest city, when you have uh, offices, schools, and culture centers, and homes, and so on. And Sikle and Stockholm Wood City is a good example of that. Mm -hmm. In this area, for example, we have a big, uh, big school area, so more than 2,000 students in this area. Mm -hmm. We have uh, culture centers, cinemas and theaters and so on. And we got uh, lots of uh, retail and services mm -hmm. in the area. And on top of that, we're going to add 2,000 homes and uh, more than 7,000 office spaces. Mm -hmm. So this is a really a uh, 15-minute city with all the possible services that you need in your everyday life, mm -hmm. which is really also great for the environment. And, and everything, including the schools, the office buildings, they'll be made primarily from wood. Yeah, so the decision we have taken is to build uh, the whole area, 250,000 square meters uh, and in wood. Do you know if there is any project of this magnitude anywhere in the world? We did some research before, but mm. uh, and there are some large uh, uh, residential projects or there's just office projects. But uh, when we put together the scale, <laughs> 250,000 square meters, no one is that big. Mm. So it's this unique. will be essentially the world's largest construction project made from wood? Yeah. Wow. That's our decision. And, and mm. when will you start? We, we actually start uh, two projects this year, so we took the decision last year, mm -hmm. uh, and of course such a big suit's so gonna be uh, built for maybe 10-15 years, but uh, already this year we will start a residential project in one area, mm -hmm. so it's about 80 homes we will create there, mm -hmm. and uh, that will be completed 2026. Sweden, where trees occupy more space than people and buildings combined, has a history of building with wood. Nowhere is this more evident than in Vekhu, 
a southern Swedish town often considered Europe's greenest city. This small university town is home to about 70,000 people. Here, almost everything from relatively tall buildings to university campuses, from bridges to lecture halls, is made of wood. Tell us about this train station and uh, I'm told that this is made entirely from wood. Yes, this is a cooperation between the, mm. the train station and also the municipality. Mm -hmm. So this is a house that we combine mm. the municipality and the people who works at the municipality mm -hmm. together with the train station. Mm. So bef before this train station was made, yeah. what did you have here? What nothing. 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 You a small train station. Okay. A small one with a, a shop. Okay, and gotcha. where you can buy your tickets. Well, why, why do you use wood so much in construction in this city? I don't think any other city around the world uses wood as much. Yeah. Yeah, we have the, the forest just around the corner. Mm. That's one of the reasons. We have a lot of business here in Växjö region that works with uh, industrial buildings, mm. but also with uh, forestry. So mm. we have a lot of sawmills. And uh, most of all, of course, it's a climate neutral material. So we really want to lower our impact on the carbon uh, dioxide so that's also one of the reasons that we build with wood okay, and yeah. it's um, yeah it's a unique and it's we love it mm. it's a you have this feeling about being in the forest as the race to build the world's tallest timber skyscraper heats up some experts are sounding the alarm stressing the need for caution they warn that the consequences of failure could be catastrophic for this emerging industry. Built in 20 stories where you make a mistake will ruin the whole industry, even for five to eight story buildings. So uh, you have to take it in small steps and, and not competing in, in, in speed, uh, hate or, or whatever, just to show that, that you're the best in the world. Make it right because it's a lot at stake here for the environment. What is the future of wood construction? I think wood and the future. I think when I see wood construction, I think, as you said, the trend today is that, I mean, mass timber is growing. We are building more and more with wood. We are aiming for skyscrapers with wood. And the thing is that wood is a very limited material. I mean, we have the forest. So the question is, if we are building everything with wood, I and mean, we are looking at the future, how the population is good, do we have enough wood? And I think we can answer this question on, I think, a national level, European level, and a global level. I think if you look at Sweden, for instance, the forest is growing more than what we are taking. And if you also look at the Europe, the situation is the same. But it is not the same for globally, which means that, I mean, we have to deal with wood much more efficiently so that, I mean, the wood from one part of, uh, part of Europe can be exported and used in other parts of the world. I think that's very well said responsible uh, forest management is absolutely essential you know when in this issue because you can't just uh, you know cut down trees without replacing those trees with, with new ones right you gotta make sure that uh, you don't uh, deforestate an entire uh, territory or country In building this train station from wood, the city of Vekhu sent an unequivocal message to the world. What was the message? That you can build everything in wood if you want to. Mm -hmm. And uh, we put a, put a statement that we can, so can you. I know wood is not the solution for every country. Not every nation is as fortunate as Sweden where 70% of its land is covered by forests. But I feel that countries with forests or the ability to import timber from neighboring countries at a competitive price should consider increasing their use of timber in construction. Studies have shown that building with wood is good for both the environment and our health. Additionally, it can help mitigate urban heat and make our cities look a little prettier than the concrete jungles we have today. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to our channel if you want more content on the latest groundbreaking innovations that will change our future.